Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, today's webinar. My name is Mikhail Naumov. I'm co-founder and chief strategy officer here at Digital Genius. Uh, today with us, we have customer service experience expert, Shep Hyken. Shep has authored hundreds of articles, numerous books, and has helped countless companies amaze their customers and their employees. We're really glad to have Shep with us today. Hello, Shep. Hey, excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Good to have you. So uh, today, we're going to talk about a few uh, number one, uh, we're going to cover the core challenges in the customer service industry today. We're going to look at some next generation of tools and technology that can help contact centers. We're going to talk about the whole hype about chatbots and AI. We're going to figure out what's real, what's not, what's good, what's, what could be better. And we're going to talk about AI's contribution to better customer service and experience. So that's the agenda for today. We'll kick off with uh, a first question to Shep. Shep, I know you've been, you've been uh, in tons of places, tons of companies, you've seen lots of things go down. Tell us a story. Tell us something about, you know, that really drew you. I think one of the things that concerns me uh, with any company is the lack of personalization, or if they do it right, that it's totally a, an amazing personalized experience. And I'll never forget calling a major company for support. I had a question, and the first thing they asked me was, uh, and they answered quickly, no hold time, no virtual response system, and uh, this is going to be good. They said, can you tell us what your account number is? And I yeah. said, I don't know the account number. Uh, and they said, well, what's your phone number? I go, by any chance, do you have that on caller ID? Yes, we do, but we need to confirm it. That's cool. Here's your account number. When I told the phone number, great. Now she asks what I'm calling about, and then she says, let me connect you with the right department. The very next yeah. person I talked to, the very first thing they ask for is, What's your account number? Why? I Why? mean, yeah, it's like, is that what I am, an account number? I'm not, by the way, the last person just asked that. You should have that up on your screen and my entire history of anything I've ever called about, purchased, et cetera, et cetera. Instead, can I have your account number again? Again. Yeah, yeah no, that's, that's a common story. I think, uh, you know, everybody, everybody has been through that, both on the customer side as well as on the customer service professional side. And I think it all comes down to really not having the right setup or the right tools in place to give you that data when you most need it, right? That's kind of what it comes down to. Yeah, and I think we're probably going to get into more of that as we get into our conversation. Yeah, for sure. So, um, interesting. You reminded me of a story that happened to me once. This was years ago, and I just ordered my first pair of shoes online, and you guessed it. It was from Zappos. And when I called in, because I had, I, there's something that went wrong and I had to, I had to get it replaced. So when I called them and I remember this distinct, I was, I was just, just coming out of my car, dialed the number, no hold time, rang twice. And the woman picked up and said, it is a wonderful morning here at Zappos. How may I help you? And that just like, that spoke to me because the way that this person was able to, you know, she didn't have the tools for the personalization. She didn't know who I was. But even before we got into the conversation, what I was about, I was already predisposed as a customer to have a really good positive experience. And at the end of the day, she took care of my problem and I told her to have a nice day. And the conversation was probably a 10 out of 10 that I've ever had. So wow. that's and reminding it, me of that. And it started out, and this is important. People think first impressions for the first time you meet somebody, but first impressions are really for whatever sets the tone for whatever interaction is to follow. And while you may not have talked to that person, that support rep, uh, ever before, you had encountered the company before. So right. this was just another interaction you were having, and it was setting the tone for that particular interaction. And obviously, she set the tone like a rock star. That's right. So the, the, the moral of the story there is, you know, first impressions are continuous. And yep. when you're representing a brand, when you're a customer service professional, and you're literally working in the trenches, you are the frontline communicator between your company and its customers. So first impressions count, you know, triple there, and they have to happen consistently every time. Cool. Okay. So the second question we really wanted to touch on today was, you know, what do you think, Chef, some of the core challenges in customer service are right now? You mentioned personalization, but what else? What else do you see? Sure, I, I can really narrow it down, and I'll expand on it. But I can narrow it down to really one word, and that word is consistency. Yeah. And, and here's why: uh, a, a consistent experience ten years ago is pick up the phone, call, get right through. Or, gosh, every time I call, I know I'm going to be on wait. Well, you're you already can anticipate what the predictable experience is going to be. But what I'm talking about now is consistency from channel to channel. 
from rep to rep. And that's an issue. If, and just recently, Nordstrom has made a big play in the online world. And somebody wrote an article about their concern that Nordstrom is going to lose its customer service edge if they move on online. And I had to respond back, say, you know, may or may not happen. Jury's still out. We don't know. But I'm going to bet they thought long and hard about every single component that goes into that online experience before they decided to do it because they don't want to erode their reputation. And if you're coming in, you know, everybody talks about omni-channel, uh, where yeah. you've got, you know, these different ways of connecting with the company. I love uh, my friends over at Pegasus Systems. They say there's, there's no channel. Uh, really, it should be called a no channel, be- meaning it doesn't really matter what channel it is. You're going to yeah. connect with us. You're going to connect with us. Who cares? And every time you do, you're going to get the consistent experience that you expect. It may be a different experience because – Coming in via a social channel versus coming in via chat versus coming in via the phone, there's going to be different ways to finally get to that rep. However, once it all happens and it's smooth and it's as expected, the service element truly kicks in. That's where the support rep is supporting the customer, and the whole thing needs to be seamless. By the way, if we jump from one channel to the next, and many times that's going from a social channel or a chat uh, or chat bot to chat with a live agent to yep. jumping on the phone to deal with a deeper issue. Every one of those has to be consistent in how they're managed. They need to say, a customer needs to say, you know what, uh, I, I don't know which channel to go to. They're all so good. Wouldn't that be a beautiful problem? Oh, I would. It actually brings me back to the first story you told, which is right. that, hey, it, this is a huge part of consistency. You know, if you're switching channels, the company should already know and have on record the previous conversations you've had. And we're seeing some improvements on the technology side. You know, we're seeing these agent consoles coming out, which are becoming much better when it comes to this omni-channel, or as you called it, and your friends at Pega Systems called it, you know, the no-channel experience. I think that's really cool. Uh, for a second, um, the, there's more and more channels popping up every day, right? So if you think back to how customer service has evolved as a history, back in the day, before we had phones, Customer service was about leaving your office, driving to somebody's house, and fixing their problem for them. You know, back in the day of account managers, you know. And then suddenly we've got phones, and with a phone, you can just pick up the phone, and you can walk the person through with the instructions of fixing their refrigerator or whatever it was. Then we got the computer, and with the computer, you could do wonderful things like email, chat, you know, social. We're moving more and more in that technology vector to more intelligent applications. We're going to spend a little time talking about that today. Before we get there, what are some other channels that you've encountered your customers and the companies you support um, using? You mentioned some social. What are the other channels you've seen? Well, I think social is a huge channel. But obviously, you know, you get your Twitters and your Facebooks and that kind of social media channel. But then if you think about it, you've got, you know, uh, can we come in via chat? And when we get to chat, do we get to a chat bot or are we dealing directly with a human being? And by the way, the best systems, you don't know the difference. And yeah. the best systems, the, the, the robot, the machine, the computer says, oh, based on the comments that are being made, the way they're being phrased, this customer doesn't like me, doesn't like the answers yeah. I'm giving. I'm going to seamlessly switch them over to a human so a human yeah. can maybe pick up on things I can't pick on, up on the nuances. And many times that human is going to say, wow, we can keep typing back and forth. Anyway, I can jump on the phone with you. I can then use the computer. We can share screens. So you've got all that technological. But let's go to social for a minute because people don't necessarily think of social as a true customer service channel. But you know what? When I'm on Twitter and I'm, in the, I'm up in an airplane and I'm circling an airport because there's rain and storms below, and it looks like, because I can tell, I've looked at the schedule, my connecting flight's going to take off without me. I can go from in Twitter to American Airlines, direct message, and say to them, I'm on this flight. If this is my frequent flyer number. Please help. And within minutes, typically under 10 minutes, but even sooner than that, uh, I will typically get a response that says, we have protected you on the next flight. Thanks Amen. for that. Yeah, and, and that's the way it should be. That's amazing. No, by the way, this is, you're still circling. You've got the onboard Wi-Fi going and you're feeding the airline in which you're flying, letting them know that you're not going to land in time to catch the connection. How cool is that, right? So that's not just Twitter. That's also onboard Wi-Fi. That's also the airline's ability to connect with people in these new and interesting ways. I really like that. That's cool. Did yeah, you- let's, let's go a go step ahead. further, though, because I want to talk about review sites. Okay. That's a great customer support channel. 
it's it's kind of a passive channel. It's like, why did the customer go there first? Or did the customer go there second, which is not good, okay? Because yeah, they, yeah. they had a problem. And sometimes that's what happens okay. with Twitter and Facebook is they, they get frustrated because there's a long hold time or maybe the oh. rep wasn't as good as they should have been. So they go to, you know, social. And my friend Jay Bear, who I, is, is one of my favorite guys, he wrote the most amazing book last year called Hug Your Haters, people that – you know, complain. And one of the things he said is thanks to social media, customer service has become a spectator sport. Love that line. I wish I came up. <laughs> That's a good one. But it's true. So if I'm on Yelp and I leave a, a, a review for somebody, what I'm really looking for is not just to get, you know, I'm aggravated with the company, but I would love a response from the company. And the company needs to respond quickly, get to me fast, try to get me into a direct message on the phone mode so they can resolve the problem so they can go back on that same social channel, uh, a review site, and then say, hey, thanks for letting us take care of you. And in the perfect world, and by the way, perfect doesn't always happen, and you want that customer to come back and say, yeah, it all worked out. And I use the, 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 the company Yelp. And then there's TripAdvisor. In virtually every industry, there are review sites. They don't look like Yelp or TripAdvisor, but maybe they're just bulletin boards. Maybe they're just places for people to go and meet. Uh, you know, a LinkedIn group, in a sense, is an opportunity for somebody to leave a review and talk about you and ask for help. Oh. And the companies need to be responding to all of these. And you say, well, how can they be everywhere? They don't need to be. There's software that will pick up every mention that's made on a social channel. And it will aggregate it into one place so that your team can have a co yep. consistent environment within which to work to address all of those messages and all of those reviews. Yes. That's very cool. You know, in the early days of Digital Genius, this is going back a number of years ago, I, I spoke with, with one airline and we were talking about social and they told me that the biggest mistake they ever made was to open up the, uh, the, the support handle on Twitter for the airline. And I said, you're really... Hey, why? And they said, because we're getting bombarded and, you know, we're getting all of these people coming in and they have problems, they have issues, and now they're speaking publicly. And just like you said, it has become a spectator sport. So it's now blowing up in the media and the news. And the, the gentleman said to me, you know, anything we can do to get those complaints and support queries off of the public channels, we would, we would love that. And I said, okay, interesting. I, I see what you're talking about, but from a customer's perspective, hey, I'm going to go where I want to go to make right. my, my voice heard. And if, in fact, if I can go to a platform that will amplify it and maximize the chance of my issue being solved, that's consistently where I'm going to go more and more. And yet, here you have another example of a, of a, of a different airline that has made social as a core fundamental channel for all of their support. And I'm talking about KLM Airlines, of course. Yes, uh, KLM. Uh, yes. Airlines, I talked uh, about that when we first met. Of course, I mean, they're one of the biggest innovators in the space. Again, they were just in the news this week. They were the first airline globally to start supporting their customers via WhatsApp uh, messaging app, which has over a billion users globally. It works in places where you don't necessarily need a phone plan, just as long as you have an internet, you know, and it is really an interesting way how different some companies in the same industry treat their customers and approach technology as a catalyst to, to solve whatever it is they're trying to solve for. Right, and they're embracing it. I'll tell you what else they're embracing is, is that uh, they are recognizing that there is a whole generation that, by the way, is now the largest generation. That millennial generation is the number one uh, buying generation currently today. They finally usurped the baby boomers and Gen Y right. and X and all that. So that being the case, they know who their customers are. And granted, not all customers are going to be on WhatsApp but a big amount of them are. And I think that's really important. Uh, you made a comment uh, earlier, you know, uh, all these channels, which ones should we be on? And it's really the ones where the customers are. And uh, you've got software that can get you to those and aggregate for you uh, all the different channels people are on and how they're connecting with you and writing about you, amplifying their feelings about you. And I think there's no excuse not to be doing that today. I, I think it's it's becoming table stakes. It's not new anymore. You're not an early adopter to this type of technology. Now, some of the things we will talk about, yes, perhaps there are early adopters uh, thinking about it, doing it today, but this is table stakes. For sure. For sure. I couldn't agree with you more. And there's lots out there too. It's not like 
There's, you know, some people think in software it's a winner take all. There are many different services and platforms out there that can give you uh, very similar functionality at the end of the day, and they differentiate really on the way they serve you, on the usability of their product for the end users, which is the, which is the customer service representatives, and then if there's any automation involved, it's really your end customers, and that's, you know, at the end of the day, you have to please those guys. So let's dive into that for a sec, Chef. So um, it's no surprise Digital Genius is an artificial intelligence company. You know, we were founded three and a half years ago. Uh, our mission uh, is twofold. One, to help advance the science of artificial intelligence with all of the research our research teams conduct, but also to make that research practically applicable in the contact center to help solve real challenges in that, in that environment. Mm -hmm. And so to that end, we've pretty much spent the last three and a half, four years living in contact centers, sitting next to the professionals, the agents, the reps that are working there, watching what they do day to day with one question on our mind. How do we apply machine learning in a practical way to help make their job better? Because our thesis was that despite what you, you, know, you might hear in the news about AI replacing people and jobs and all that, we can talk about that, but our thesis was exactly what's behind me on the banner, which is human plus AI is the winning model. The combination of human and machine intelligence working together, helping each other, and pretty much doing what each one does best. So let's, if you don't mind, let's, let's cover that. What are you hearing about AI? What are you hearing about machine learning in the contact center space? Wow, so I, I think it's hot right now. It's, it's really, um, you know, I'm, I'm almost saying, uh, you know, you're reaching the tipping point where it's becoming normal. I think people are accepting uh, AI. And, and chat box is really the big area where you're seeing AI doing most of the work that's directly interacting with the customer. The key mm -hmm. is, the key is it has to work. So I, I just want to say there's, uh, you have to have enough data in there uh, mm -hmm. to where uh, the, the machine can actually understand what the customer is asking and know where to go. Sometimes uh, that could be thousands and thousands of customers and it takes a while. That's why they beta test and beta test and they ask you, Will you be part of the beta test? Because that's why they call it beta. It may or may not work, right? So, uh, but I'm saying that's that's a big part of it. Uh, is AI acceptable? You know, I uh, and and the chatbot. So I'm online, and I'm and by the way, this is the same company that I was calling earlier that asked for my account number. This. So let me tell you why I called the company. So I'm on their website. I'm getting ready to buy a docking station for a computer, and yeah. I uh, it, a little pops up, is there any questions you have or can we help you today? Whatever the question was, I can't remember, but it's like, yeah, you can. Does this docking station charge the computer when, when the computer is docked? Mm -hmm. And the answer came back, which computer do you want to buy? Oh God, okay. so a typical chatbot, you know, you're asking the question, it's not even registering. Right, right, so I'll, let me ask it a different way, okay? <laughs> so I ask it a <laughs> love this way. game. And I get the same answer. And on the third way, I realized, you know, this chatbot is about me buying a computer, not even about the product on the no. page that I'm on on their website. I'm telling you. And so it is uh, such a common experience. Right. So that's where when people have that experience, you know, they, they say in the world of customer service, you know, eight to 12 good things have to happen to make up for something bad or six good yeah. things. What, what area of the retail or what area of manufacturing or what type of business you're in. Well, it's the same thing. If you have a bad AI chatbot experience, you don't want to deal with a chatbot for a while. And oh. it takes a while before you get comfortable with them again. You know, right. uh, so <laughs> my mom's credit card was stolen once uh, via an internet transaction. She refuses to use the internet for the rest <laughs> of her life. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, hey, you know what? A bad impression is a bad impression. Can exactly. last, last forever. I'm not using that internet thing. That, that, that'll never catch on. They steal credit cards. So, <laughs> <laughs> so okay. oh, that's interesting. I want to zoom in on that if you don't mind. Okay. You just, you, you just described the typical experience a customer has when they go to a website and they engage with what we call here a rule-based chatbot. Because um, mm -hmm. really when you talk about chatbots, they split into two fundamentally different categories in the way they're built you have a rule-based methodology, which is pretty much a scripted bot that has been you know, told what are the typical keywords, what are the possible phrases, and what are all the different questions that are likely to be asked by a customer on this page, and then it matches it with the right answers that have also been pre-scripted. Now that is a rule-based, that's been around for decades, and we've all seen it, we've all kind of 
played the game of how many ways can I phrase this question before it finally understands what I'm talking about. And so that's the rule-based methodology. The other way to build your chatbot, or I should say reinforce your chatbot, is to use pure machine learning. And you touched on that a minute ago when you said, depending on how much data right. you can use to train this thing. So the rule-based bot is trained by linguists who are sitting there and literally, you know, there's very clever ways to do it quickly. So it's not like a crazy arduous exercise. And you can actually get a linguist to script you a bot quickly, but it'll always be dependent on the things that it has been scripted to know about. Right. On the flip side, the machine learning approach to building bots is by taking real historical conversations that have already happened inside of your contact center over the course of the last few years, converting those into mathematical representations of language called word vectors, using them to train this mathematical model. And when you hear people talking about AI machine learning, that's what they're talking about. They're talking about the word vectors, powering the learning, powering the statistics, and then whenever new messages come in from, let's say, chef looking at, uh, to find out information about the docking station, the system actually, in real time, figures out and makes a prediction of what is the right answer to this question based on all of the conversations right. that it has been Thousands of about. conversations. And For sure. What's interesting is that in the right situation, that computer can not only answer the question, but it can predict what your next question is going to be. It can predict what the next problem you're going to have. And therefore, it can help you resolve those before you even know to ask them. It can make suggestions. And, and this is where, and I know we're going to get into the human plus yeah. AI, but when the computer is no longer talking to the customer, but is actually interacting with the agent supporting yeah. the customer, that's where it, it just gets freaking so cool to me. And <laughs> I get so excited. And uh, you're, you're, Jenny Romney, who's the CEO of IBM, called yep. it IA, uh, which is the intelligent assistant. So I know we're going to get into that. I, I, I know oh. I hit my hand. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hand, but I'm so excited about that concept because everybody thinks that this artificial intelligence is going to take over and eliminate jobs. And you know what? It's going to do uh, it's going to tweak jobs it's going to make jobs better okay who do i sound like it's gonna, we got jobs hey. no. <laughs> no. but it is it's going to make jobs better it's going to make service more effective and yeah. easier for the customer it's going to make reps customer service reps more knowledgeable there's so much that could happen and 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 to your point this is what digital genius does is it's representative of thousands of conversations and it, uh, the predictive analytics are unbelievable. And yes, um, in a sales situation, that customer service rep is, is talking to a, a customer. The machine is saying, based on this customer's profile and thousands of others, you should suggest this product. It will make their life better. It'll make it easier. It'll be a, a better experience for them. So to, to your point about the human plus AI, that's, you know, that's our entire thesis around our business and, te and technology. Um, it's, it's about combining the two, right? So the way we look at it here is like, hey, what if you took all the calculators away from accountants? How would they do their job? What if you took Excel models away from, I don't know, bankers? How can they possibly do their job? Well, AI is very much going to become table stakes inside the customer service profession as a thing that is absolutely a must. If my contact center doesn't have a machine learning algorithm that's supporting me, just like a calculator supports an accountant and an Excel model supports a banker, then that's not the contact center for me. That's not the company where I'm going to spend my time working because frankly, as a professional working in the field, I want to spend as much of my time as possible engaging genuinely with customers, solving serious issues, helping make my brand good, Instead of copy pasting, categorizing, drop down menus, clicking around screens, which is something that a machine does better anyway and faster. And it's, do you ask? More accurately. More accurate. So we've asked hundreds of agents, you know, this simple question What do you love about your job and what do you hate about your job? And the, the, every time it comes back, I love engaging with my customers, I love helping them. And it's never, I like clicking, I like copy pasting, I like searching knowledge bases for answers. That's actually the part of the job they say they don't enjoy as much. So anything that technology can do to kind of fix the balance and make the people do what the people really like doing and let the machine do the stuff that's not really efficient for people to do is a place where contact centers will win. So that's, that's, that's our thesis on that. And one more item, uh, 
think people maybe on this call, though, remember these things called Tamagotchis, right? These little things we carried around in our pocket. It was like a little computer game on inside a box, and it's like a little thing that you train, you feed it every day, you, like, take care of it, and after a while it becomes stronger and grows up, and, like, it's more fun to play with it. Mm -hmm. So a machine learning model in a contact center is not so different. It's there to help you. You know, you, it'll help you do your job, but it's also learning from you. You're Every taking conversation, it. it is learning. Bingo. Every time you do something, it, it, it keeps track. So you, you accept a suggested answer, it learns. You personalize an answer that was given to you by the machine, it learns. You ignore one because you thought it wasn't good enough, it learns from that too. And over time, it becomes stronger and it can help you and really becomes kind of your, your own personal assistant to do your job. Cool. Okay, so uh, one more point on chatbots, which we talked about. You know, there are going to be companies out there that think that they can pretty much take over their whole customer service experience using a chatbot. 100% automated, no people. What are the? What do you think? What do you have to say to those companies? I, you got I, to just, I just gave you a great story about what happened with that chatbot. Uh, and here's the thing: that's a great idea till the customer needs to talk to somebody because they're not getting the answer. You know. Um, Let's talk about a small company called Amazon and Jeff Bezos, who's absolutely yep. brilliant. Do you know, in the early days, they kept saying, you know, we got to put the phone number so people can contact us when they have a problem. And his response was, we should be so good that they don't have to contact us. And you know what? That's great until they actually do have to contact us. And maybe they're perfect, and, and, and they aren't, by the way, and nobody is, and that doesn't mean I love Amazon. They're a feature of an upcoming book that I'm writing because I just think that even though they're like uh, the poster child, if not even a cliche in what great service is all about, they're the biggest and best at it. So here's what happens. I buy my product. It gets to the loading dock. UPS, FedEx, uh, whoever picks it up, uh, the, the post office, and they deliver it to me, but somehow in or out, uh, one of these three companies or whoever they're using to deliver fails the service. Now, who do I call? Do you call Amazon? Do you call FedEx? Who do you call? Right. Well, I probably don't even know it was FedEx that picked it up. All I know is that they say my product is shipped. I'm going to call Amazon. And Amazon's not going to say to me, um, it left the dock on time. I don't know. Sorry, man. You have to find another way to find out. They're not going to do that. And that's why now, uh, you know, they have, by the way, they're a great automated system. They use all kinds of technology. But if you need to talk to somebody, they're available to talk to. And when you finally do talk to somebody, it validates why you chose to use Amazon. And I think that's a real important point. Set up your automation to work as well as it possibly can, recognizing that just as you would talk to a human being, if you're not getting the answer you want, or perhaps the level of support needs to be at a higher level, that yeah. support agent is going to bump you to another person, a, a, a higher tier or even a supervisor, if you will. Well, that's what's happening in technology as well. If the technology isn't working the way it's supposed to work in supporting the customer, you're going to get bumped to a human being. And guess what? As that bump happens, you don't have to answer the same question a bit again about what is your account number. Right. Because the That's number it. will transfer. It should be natural. It should be a progression. If I'm on a website filling out a form and I'm having difficulty and I pick up the phone and call and say, you know, I've been on the website, that agent should be able to look at, that, at my record and say, yeah, I could see you're stuck on question number 16. And it's That's that right. simple, that easy. That's the way it should be done. That's right. Cool. So talking about a lot of different things in technology, uh, from what you've seen in recent months, what do you think are the must-haves to table stakes items in terms of technology versus the, the nice-haves or the things that are still experimental, not quite there yet? You know, there's stuff, you know, AI is just a very broad topic. There's the chat interfaces. There's image recognition, video generation. There's so many different experimental items. What do you think are the nice-to-haves versus the must-haves in a contact center? Sure, and I mean, if you if you just stay with technology, I think we're still um, we're almost at a tipping point with AI, where it's becoming pretty common uh, for a large company to have some version of that. But I think that we, as a contact center, uh, and I use the word we, I work with so many contact centers, I feel I'm part of them. Uh, we should be looking at all different channels, and I think what you must have is first of all, you must have a social presence. That's yeah. not so much about technology, but you do need the software to find out where you're being talked about. So we already talked about that. Number two, 
definitely self-serve solutions, self-service solutions are super important. And uh, it can be as simple as a good frequently asked questions page all the way to, I love when uh, companies use video to support their customers. I love when um, a company uh, crowdsources answers, you know, you go on and there's uh, forums that they have where people can chime in and say, this is how I resolve this issue. And many times uh, the companies learn from how customers are using their product. So a self-service. Uh, and then as we get into AI uh, and chatbots, I think a good basic chatbot is becoming really important. And you know what? It's a great thing for a customer to be able to go on and have a quick conversation. And even over the phone, if you're dealing with um, a virtual response system, which by the way, I hate virtual response systems that repeat everything back to me that I have to verify they said this. I want a real time, almost like I'm talking to a human being type conversation. Yeah. And when you can take care of the lower level issues, uh, such as I need to change my billing address, I need to put in my new credit card number because uh, the last one was stolen, that type of thing, you shouldn't have to wait on hold to talk to a rep and go through all the security questions. Uh, and there's all types of things that are now available. Uh, voice recognition, by the way, that's a great technology where I can call and within 10 words, even if I have a cold, unless there's a lot of noise going around me, yeah. uh, that computer is going to say, you're talking to Shep or you're talking to Mikhail. The, 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 it's so good. And by the way, these systems never make a mistake. They do say, I can't identify the voice because there's too much interference, but they don't ever do the wrong, they don't ever say it's the wrong person. I, no, I think there's, it's important to have uh, gates that prevent bad things from uh, happening in, when using technology. We've seen some, some funny, kind of not so funny actually, experiences happening on Twitter with the early generative chatbots. I think somebody put a chatbot out there that learned from a bunch of spammers and started offending people publicly and it <laughs> got pulled out and you know, caused some reputational damage for the companies. But at the end of the day, you really need to be uh, you, you need to have, like safety measures in place, no doubt about that. But also, uh, you can't miss out on not having because it has become table stakes, as, as you had said. Cool. So um, I know you see a lot of things out there. You travel a lot. I know that you are very familiar with venues, forums, conferences that could be really great places for customer service professionals to either level up their game, you know, get additional certification, just learn about what's going on in the industry, connect with their colleagues and friends from other companies. Maybe if, if you can name a couple of conferences focused on this topic that you've been to, that you wow. recommend people to come to. I mean, I'm traveling all over the world talking, you know, different, I'll tell you what, keep an eye on your inbox because yeah. obviously just like we're having this webinar Today, there's uh, conferences, like I'm doing one next week where one of my clients, they're having a road show. And it's one of a number of cities that we're hitting. And I do, a, I do these all the time with different, uh, you know, it's like a user's group that's on the road traveling from city to city. Uh, conferences like uh, ICMI, which mm -hmm. is, you know, contact management. Um, uh, call Center World, or uh, what's it called? Uh, con it just happened in June. CCW, yeah, yeah. Um, th that's a big one, and you know, I've gone, I've gone over to Singapore, and I've done their their support uh, programs, and gone down to you know South Africa and places yeah. like that. So there's so many going on all the time. Uh, you and I met in Portland at uh, what was that one called? Uh, like, uh, S -S DX. Yeah, yeah. SDX. That was a great one, by the way. They they totally kickstarted it. It was a kickstart. I think that's a brilliant move. So, I mean, for, for those that are uh, hanging out with us today, this is a company that said, let's have a conference. Let's not take a chance uh, on, you know, paying for a lot of money to market this thing. Let's just go on sort of Kickstarter. And here's what you get. If you pay this amount of money, you get a ticket to come. <laughs> Simple as that. Cool. In other words, you're selling tickets, but it yeah. was brilliant. And what they have, 300, 400 people there. It was fantastic. It was all focused on customer service professionals, you know, people in the trenches every day. I got to speak with, you know, customer service reps from hundreds of companies. They had an awesome gift battle where they would put up random tweets of companies um, that companies would get. And then there was a competition between two agents and they had to come up with the right funniest gift. Uh, to address that problem. So it was, it was a really good place for customer service professionals to meet up, gather, hang out, discuss the latest things that are going on in the industry. So if any of you are on this today on this webinar, I encourage you to check out SDX. 
Um, a couple of tech-focused ones, uh, specifically if you are users of, let's say, Zendesk or Salesforce, each of those has their own user right. comp. Right, all of the companies. Zendesk like Relay. Dreamforce is coming up in November. Cool. Zendesk has theirs. Um, everyone has a user's conference. Um, exactly. And when you go there, you can see the latest technology in action. You can see if it's something that's worth bringing into your contact center. And as Chef had said, keeping an eye on your inbox is also important. You know, even though there's a bunch of spam coming in there, I, I get tons of spam. Once in a while, I get some nice gems, like the one where I met Chef. So the last question I have for you, Chef, for today for the webinar really is, uh, hey, you know, customer service is evolving with the help of artificial intelligence. And my simple question to you is, are you ready, man? Are you ready? Hey, man, I am ready. Uh, let me just, you know, I know we briefly touched on it. Uh, I want to say a few things that I think companies need to be ready. And more than ready, they need to be accepting of it. So what that means is, uh, you know, I just talked to a company that their, their employees were very fearful because they're bringing in this AI component. They had worked on it for quite a, quite a number of months, if not even over a year, and they replaced uh, uh, th this is what they said. They just eliminated this lowest level tier customer support. And they thought all these people are going to lose their jobs. No, they trained them to take care of the more important functions. So one yeah. of the questions, I know you kind of posed it and hinted to me that we're going to talk about whether or not it's going to replace humans. I don't think at this point it is. Number two, uh, are we ready for it? And I talked a little bit about this earlier. When the artificial intelligence isn't supporting the customer, but supporting the agent, it makes the agent and the company that much better. And when that, that uh, machine is listening to the conversation with the customer in real time, that's so powerful because it can make the suggestions and it could do it right. There's a company that's experimental right now, but it's a, it's a retail store. You walk into the retail store, facial recognition picks up who the customer is. When the customer engages with a salesperson, the earpiece in the uh -huh. salesperson's ear tells that uh, sales rep or the yeah, salesperson who the customer is, what they bought before, what colors they like, uh, on and on, and the, uh, what size shoes they wear, what size dress or sport jacket or whatever. It's amazing. It's kind of spooky. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, I'm one of those people, if you say, you know, how do you feel about somebody putting a chip in your neck and following you around? And, you know, and, hey, bring it on, man. You know, I think if it makes my life better and everything's more convenient, I'm not hiding anything. At least I don't think I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, no I, I respect that, Chef. I think the thesis of everything where it's all going is humans working together with intelligent applications are going to have a better experience in their job. They're going to have better outcomes for their customers and the companies where they work. So that's pretty much the story. Yeah, you said it's perfectly said. I mean, the accuracy, the uh, uh, I think everything's just like you said, it's going to be better. Uh, so yeah. uh, it's H plus AI equals great CS. I love that. That's a good one. But, all right. Well, remember that. Chef, thank you so much for being with us today. For the folks uh, tuning into the webinar, please submit your questions into the field section, uh, into the question field section, and we'll get back to those um, uh, at the next session. So thank you very much for coming, Chef. Thank you. It's great to have you. Great to be here. Thanks. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.